What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is every cultural region of the United States explained in a different room. Yep, we well, are not a different. Yeah, we've been in here previously, haven't we? Uh, a different mm -hmm. angle, I guess, of this room. Uh, we're in, I guess, Archie's bedroom, which he's not in it yet, so we thought we'd make use of the corner mm -hmm. to clear up a bit of space in our room. Yeah, and also when he's asleep. When he's asleep, we, we can record. stream in here. We've got the baby camera set up now. Yeah. He's, not, he's with your mum at the moment, but like tonight when we get home. We, can we have the baby camera set up so we can see him. Exactly, it makes sense instead of our boys just waking him up. So it makes sense to be in here. It feels a bit echoey now we're recording. Uh, so I don't know what the audio is going to be like. Hopefully future videos will sort out the echo a little bit. But it is a bit more echoey, isn't it? It is a bit. But I don't know why, because there's more stuff in it than there was before. Yeah, I'm not sure. But we'll figure it out. Hopefully the audio is okay. Smash that button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. Let's check out every cultural reason of the United States explained what we got. It would be a mischaracterization to say that from coast to coast, America is one contiguous homogenous entity. That the people from the lands of California are identical to those of New York, to those of Georgia, to those not of true. Texas. America is a country made of several distinct regions with unique cultures, histories, and geographies. Yeah. We've spoken before about the various nations of America, that is, the distinct peoples that inhabit the United States, but today's video is going to focus more broadly on geographic cultural regions. Naturally, okay. there will be overlap, but we'll explain all of this shortly. Hello yeah. audience, Mr. Z here with another video for you. If you're new to the, the channel, welcome. We have videos like this every week, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. To help distinguish our nation's categorization from our geographic categorization, let's refer back to our previous video on the regions of Russia. We explained how the first three regions of the country were about as thoroughly Russified as one another, while the following okay. regions featured a prominent degree of non-Russian cultures, despite Russians still constituting a majority or plurality. Russian is a nation which we can map out across the country that is Russia, and it is definitively the dominant nation across virtually every region. The United States is more proportionally diverse, and as a result, various regions of the country are home to different American nations, rather than seeing a single American nation dominate all across every region. In this way, the United States is a bit like Europe, where various nations have made their homes in various regions of the continent. As an example, there is a region of Nordic countries that are home to a Scandinavian or Norse German people, but not everyone in the Nordic region belongs to the Norse German nation. Yeah. Finland, for instance, which has a history and culture that stems from a different source, distinguishing okay. the lands of the Scandinavian people or nation from the Nordic region. In this instance, we might consider Finland a sub-region of Scandinavia, with the region as a whole being largely defined by the Norse Germanics. Our first American region is a prime example of this, perhaps the most well-known of America's regions, the South. The core of the American South encompasses the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, with the states of Virginia, Arkansas. I feel like this region as well, if you ask anyone who doesn't know much about mm -hmm. America, just off movies or anything like that, said, is a region. I feel like the South is a region people would always say. Yeah. It's like one of the biggest... I feel like everyone knows the South. Yeah, from an outsider, it's from a, a big, the biggest difference one. Yeah. The accent, you kind of... I thought Texas was included in that. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it's southern, but it's not, I guess Texas is its own beast nowadays, isn't it? I suppose. Like, yes, it's the south, but it's its own beast, whereas... You like, because it's a lot, it's more southern than top of those two states. Yeah, it technically is more southern, but like you say, I'm surprised Florida's included, because a lot of people told us not Florida, because Florida, I feel like Florida's its own beast as well. Yeah, but I guess on a map it's different, On a it? map, like, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like on a map it's... Different you can't you can't really deny it, can you? Yeah, but then like you said, the, the highlighted red is Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Georgia, and stuff like that. So that is more that region not is Louisiana. in them areas. Not Louisiana. Not Louisiana, sorry. Uh, Alabama. Uh, it's also Alabama, doesn't it? South uh, Mississippi Carolina. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that is the like the, Virginia. Yeah, that makes the sense. The strength of the southern one, which we understand, and hopefully one day we'll visit. Yeah. Hopefully. Tennessee's in there as well. Tennessee's in there. Arkansas, Florida, Louisiana, and Tennessee constituting sub-regions of the South. Naturally, the Southern Nation is the dominant people group in the region, a group of Americans primarily of Britonic and Baptist background, though African Americans do comprise a large minority in this region. It's worth noting that the Southern Nation extends beyond this range into other areas, but we'll get into that momentarily. Now this map may suffice for some people, but I and many of you agree that America's state borders are drawn very arbitrarily, and state lines like this simply fail to capture the detail of American geography and population. Fortunately, we've already solved this problem in the past. But don't worry, for those of you who want to see America's regions on a normal state map, we'll also show that toward the end. Okay. Under this new map, we can Ooh. make out the greater detail of the American South as a geographic region. 
It is a largely coastal region which is cut off from the west by the Appalachian Mountain Range and characterized by a warm, humid climate, extensive wetlands, and broadly rural character. Though this being said, the south is a well-rounded region with a diverse economy that features agricultural, industrial, and recreational elements. Yeah. It is highly religious, once again largely Baptist, and socially conservative, albeit with a high emphasis on small government and local government politics, as well as a strong sense of exceptionalism having of course seceded in the late 1800s in an effort to become its own country. Okay. The remaining subregions include Miami, which has a far larger Catholic and Hispanic population than the rest of the south and is notably more urbanized. The subregions of Atlanta and the Southern Black Belt are notable outliers for their majority or plurality African American populations. There is a largely French American or Acadian American subregion in southwestern Louisiana, as well as the more rural subregion of Arkansas, which, while ethnically and religiously identical to the rest of the South, is far more defined by its position along the bank of the Mississippi River than the rest of the Atlantic and Gulf Coastal South. The Ozarks additionally constitute a subregion of the South which is far more rural than the coastal region and almost reminiscent of the inland Appalachians, having additionally been settled by the same Scotch-Irish population of Appalachia. Speaking of which... Aside from helping define the South, this map gives definition to the whole of the United States and allows seemingly small regions to be fleshed down to what they actually are. The region of Appalachia, for instance, is only represented by West Virginia and Kentucky in the original U.S. map, when in reality the region bleeds into several states, reaching yeah. as far north as these... Like I say, it takes over some states, but yeah. it's not the whole of a state. That's yeah. quite a big difference, like I say, from the two states it shows to... It goes into quite a few, doesn't The it? spread it's throughout, and uh, this is the Appalachia, which we tried to do slang of, didn't we? Yeah. And we did not understand that. No. Completely different world. <laughs> Southern tier of New York and as far south as northern Alabama. The region has a more temperate climate, is relatively yeah. underdeveloped, heavily forested and mountainous, with the region's economy centered upon resource extraction, particularly mining, as well as heavy industry, much as we described Russia's South Ural region in our previous video. Also similar to the South Urals, the Appalachian region has a strong proclivity toward labor-oriented politics despite its heavily conservative character, sharing the Southern Baptist faith of the South. However, distinguishing it from its coastal southern neighbor, which is broadly Britonic, Appalachia houses a population which is more distinctly of Scotch-Irish ancestry. Okay. Subregions include minor protrusions of the Appalachian culture, geography, and lifestyle over the Ohio River, with the Ohio subregion being more religiously Methodist and ethnically German-American than the rest of Appalachia, while like the lands of South Indiana yeah. and Illinois, while not as mountainous as Appalachia and more agricultural, share the same Scotch-Irish rural character of the region. Additionally, is the subregion of Susquehanna, which is far more German and Lutheran and more thoroughly developed. Another region fleshed out by this map is the Greater Texas region, which is distinguished from the South by its Greater flatter Texas. and drier yeah, geography and region. climate, as well as its like higher. Like we said before, it's its own beast, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Literally, its own beast. Emphasis on resource extraction, particularly oil and natural gas, as well as its more cattle-based agricultural economy. The core of Texas is also dominated by the Southern Baptist American nation, but features a prominent minority of Hispanic Americans as well, most especially along the south and west of the region, as opposed to the large African American minority seen in the coastal south. Makes sense. Much like the coastal yeah. south, the Texan region has a pronounced sense of independence and self-sufficiency, owing to the history of the region as an independent state in the early 1800s, contributing to a sense of otherness in the Texan region from the rest of the south. This is furthered by the harsher environmental conditions in Texas which make widespread crop agriculture more difficult than in the coastal south. The Texan region is an intersection of several biomes including southern style wetlands to the east, arid desert to the west, and semi-arid prairies to name a few. Subregions of Greater Texas include the majority Catholic and Hispanic regions along the border with Mexico as well as the region of New Spain occupied by a plurality of old stock Spanish Americans. The subregion of Arizona it exists. It makes sense. It's got all our zone in there. You're gonna have a lot mm -hmm. of, like, say, Hispanic, Mexicans New Mexico. come up because it's on the border. New yeah, Mexico it makes sense. says it in itself as well. So although it's not Texas, even though some of Texas isn't even the main blue in Greater mm. Texas, because um, I suppose it differs at times, doesn't it? But like I guess you've got Oklahoma in there too. I think. Oklahoma in there a little bit as well. Which, if you're from Oklahoma, let us know um, how you feel about that because I, there's a rivalry, isn't there? I don't know. I think, I'm pretty sure it was a rival between Oklahoma and Texas. I thought it was California and Texas. Well, no, I from young Sheldon, they didn't like Oklahoma in the football, at least, I think it was. The college, oh, like American right. football. So I think there was a bit of a rivalry. I, there might not be. I might be completely wrong. Let us know yeah, in the I'm comments below. Go, the California Texas one, because yes. everyone said, I can't believe we were a California top in Texas. Yes, Literally no one that. cared, by the way. Like, no yeah. one commented on it No one actually cared. And I didn't even notice. Yeah, I, I feel like that is a 
different rivalry kind of but yeah it's, it's i feel still like that's as well. a that's an online rivalry at the moment yeah that's also more of a like <laughs> Discord rivalry. completely different areas but uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments below if that is a thing so if you're from oklahoma how do you feel about being in the greater texas region? yeah we are basing it off young sheldon so. yeah well, that's, that's all we're basing it off <laughs> This says the furthest western reach of the Southern Baptist American nation and shares much in common with the most arid parts of Texas. Though of course it is removed from the Texan core, lacks the sense of Texan identity felt by core Texans, and it is more broadly Protestant instead of singularly Baptist. The greater Tulsa subregion is an inversion of this, with a more widely diverse ethnic composition but demonstrating significant adherence to Baptist faith and culture. In some ways, the interior west, or just the west, is to the United States what Siberia is to Russia. It is a largely okay. empty expanse which might be regarded as particularly inhospitable territory. Northeastern lands along the border with yeah, Canada are perhaps area. the most yeah. pleasant with a milder climate and lands suitable to extensive crop agriculture, transitioning into denser forest as you push out west. But as you move further into the interior south, you will encounter both the towering Rocky Mountains as well as unforgiving deserts. The region is highly underdeveloped and underpopulated with a climate that shifts quickly and radically from subarctic mountaintops to hot dry deserts, but largely its climate can be classified as cold semi-arid or rather a steppe climate. Okay. Naturally the region is rooted largely in resource extraction and in terms of its population it is largely a mix of Anglo-Americans and German-Americans with a broadly Christian religious background, being less religious and more religiously diverse than previously described regions. Subregions okay. include the Deseret subregion, which is overwhelmingly Mormon, the Colorado subregion, which is overwhelmingly Native American, the Greater Sacramento Valley, which is predominantly Hispanic and Catholic, and the subregion of Lower California, which is extensively urbanized and largely Hispanic, not to mention coastal and far more supportive of the Democratic Party, as opposed to the rest of the interior west, which is more politically mixed, but leans in favor of the Republican and Libertarian parties. Okay. A relatively small region of the United States is the Pacific Northwest, a lush Mother's oasis of like you've got this whole section there mm. and like this is always and then you've just got a tiny sliver and like yeah, that's just, just a that's new region how, like, half california is exactly on either side either side of it so like you mm. go to one bit of california the region and the i guess the way people all it's like completely different to the other side yeah but it's just mad how it's just that like, small sliver like mm. why didn't the they influence yeah, why didn't the influence of that region take over? Yeah. Why? How did it create its own? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, let us know in the comments these little things. I mean, a lot of some of it's common sense as well, but it's like it's interesting to yeah, me. Very is. interesting. Of evergreen forests and mountains along the Pacific coast, bordered to the east by the Cascade Mountains and Columbia River, and characterized by its highly progressive coastal cities. The region has a cool coastal climate and could be considered somewhat underdeveloped outside of its major cities. It is predominantly Anglo-American and religiously very secular, though the Jefferson subregion is an exception to this being broadly Christian and conservative, while the San Francisco subregion is significantly more urbanized and mild in climate compared to the core northwest. Okay. The Pacific Northwest, given its location, is notably influenced by Asian Pacific culture as well as by cross-border Canadian culture neighboring British Columbia, something which has no doubt contributed to the region's particular Anglo-American culture. What we might call the Anglo-American nation, one which exists across the northern United States and which is the dominant nation within Canada. Moving okay. back eastward, we encounter the plains. As the name suggests, these lands are largely <laughs> flat, plains. rural, and agricultural, commonly referred to as America's breadbasket or the Corn Belt. Right. This agricultural yeah. richness is facilitated by the region's plentiful hydration provided by both the Mississippi and its tributaries, as well as a number of underground aquifers and overland irrigation systems, not to mention the region's hot summer continental climate and fertile soil. The population here is largely of German-American background and religiously is largely Methodist, this distinct group constituting a unique nation in and of itself. Politically, the region is largely supportive of agrarian populist politics and features a largely Scandinavian and Lutheran subregion to its north. Okay. It could be considered a relatively underpopulated region, though nowhere near yeah. as underpopulated as the interior west, and is certainly more economically productive, contributing some 40 to 60 percent of all American agriculture. Makes sense. Yeah. The Midwestern thing, region is largely like characterized yeah. by its concentration of urban developments along the Great yeah. Lakes and its high levels of industry. It is a largely coastal region that extends into prairie lands, making it highly productive not only in the field of manufacturing but in agriculture as well. Its climate is largely continental and ranges from cool to warm based on how far north and how far inland you might be. Okay. It is predominantly urban and suburban, ethnically it is largely German-American and religiously it is largely Catholic. The region was the historic- Did you say cool to warm? How- what well, I've just thought, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. we, well at least I know that as freezing cold, 
snowy wind, like winters freezing. I've never yeah. really thought about the summers. I assume it was cold. I just assumed all that bit, like even into like Boston and all that, was just like England weather for summer. Yeah, like, it kind of makes low sense. Low 20s. England weather Celsius. summer, but then extreme weather for winter. Yeah, but just like worse winters. Yeah. But then like, I know New York can get really hot. Because I've heard in New York can get quite hot. Is, yeah, because I've heard New York City is gross in the summer. Yeah, we've all, cause all the bins smells. out and stuff like it smells so like the heat, it must I'm be hot, But then it gets like minus. Then it get, we were freezing when we yeah, were there. So it was minus. Let us know in the comments, what is the, the summer like in like Wisconsin and the northern states? Mm. be interesting. Because that might help us out with yeah, trips. <laughs> definitely. The historic heart of German-American settlement in the mid to late 1800s, receiving a large share of additional immigrants from Poland, Ireland, and other parts of Europe as well. Once the hub of national industrialization, the region has extensive infrastructure based around rail travel with Chicago serving as the central rail node for the country at large. All of this gives the Midwest a historic political proclivity toward old Republican labor politics, which in contemporary times makes it somewhat politically mixed, though it has leaned strongly toward the Democratic Party in contemporary times given changes in the political priorities of the Democrats and Republicans. Okay. The Midwest has two no subregions in the yeah, form of Southern know. Illinois, which is more rural and Protestant than the rest of the Midwest, and notably places a greater emphasis on agriculture than the rest of the region. While the Greater St. Louis area constitutes another subregion, which, like the rest of the Midwest, is very industrial, German, and Catholic, but is uniquely shaped by the geography of its position on the bank of the Mississippi rather than by the Great Lakes. In the far northeastern corner, we have the region of New England. The region yeah. has a cool continental climate and is largely Ooh. forested in a mix of That's boreal stunning. and deciduous trees, so nice. but still fairly well developed and settled. The region is littered with small communities across the interior, with hubs of development being concentrated around rivers, lakes, and of course the Atlantic coast, which gives the region a unique maritime and coastal culture. Predominantly Anglo-American and Irish-American, New England is both religiously mixed and less religious than other regions, being among okay. the most secular regions in the country. Like the Pacific Northwest, New England is also significantly influenced by cross-border Anglo-Canadian culture. It has a mixed economy, though one largely focused on resource extraction and recreation, and the politics of the region are fairly trade-oriented, but largely mixed, with a lean in favor of the Democratic Party. Finally, we have the Mid-Atlantic, a region I characterized- kind of with the New England one. It's mm. got different cultures in there because so many yeah. things. The trade one's interesting as well, because I suppose back then it was all about trade initially yeah. as well, so there must have been a lot of trade around there as well, so it kind of kept a few of its mm -hmm. passing the Anglo-Canadians. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, that just speaks for itself. So it's, I didn't think they were going to be two, but I thought all that sex were going to be one. So I'm surprised yeah. it's split into two. As by its extensive urbanization and coastal environment. The Mid Atlantic is home to some of the most recognizable cities in the United States Boston, Washington, DC, Philadelphia. Though, every time I see it, I get so annoyed that we didn't. We didn't actually like try local see food it, and stuff like that. Sense. Yeah, like, we just lived off fast food and we didn't try like New York. Like I can't believe yeah, we, we, tried we New did York all stuff. like the tourist attractions. Yeah, we did all that. Right? So I feel like if we went back, it would be going back for the food. Yeah, we didn't do we did all really the any of the stuff. food and stuff like that. But then, this was like, in twenty eighteen. But then, I, but then I've seen like things that we didn't do in New York. That is there will be other stuff there now. There's some things that we didn't do, which is probably less of a priority but really cool to do. Yeah, but I, so I feel like I just need two days. Yeah, yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day. Just I want to like, do other places first, though, because I've been there, so I kind of like. But I, I, I just get mad places. that we just didn't try, like, the New York pizza, the New York deli sandwiches. Yeah, Why we did just, we not do that? I don't know, we did all the tours of things, just like food. And McDonald's. Yeah, we were quite skinny. We even at the time went as well. to a. Yeah, we were. <laughs> we even went, like, we went to a nice restaurant, but it was an English one. Yeah, we went to Calgary's. I think we went to Liverpool. Why did we not do. We Liverpool just didn't were playing that night, so we just oh, quick to go to Calgary's. We just didn't know, did we? Yeah, we didn't. But we do now. We're more educated for the next time. Yeah. And of course, New York. The region is thoroughly interconnected by its wide-reaching transportation infrastructure, and it is a major hub of trade, telecommunications, finance, and high-tech. The Mid-Atlantic is extremely diverse, though its largest ethnic groups would be Italian and Irish Americans, which in turn contributes to the region being fairly Catholic, though it also has a significant secular population. The greater Washington, D.C. Baltimore area has been classified as a sub-region given that it houses a distinctly large African-American majority. And there we have it, the nine major geocultural regions wow. of the United States, or at least the contiguous United States. 
Alaska and Hawaii constitute two unique regions of their own defined by their distinct circumstances. That makes sense. Hawaii is an island chain in the Pacific, and Alaska is a far removed territory sequestered away in the subarctic. Yeah. Much like our regional breakdown of Russia, this reorganization of the United States shines some light on many of the interstate differences, roles, and relationships that can often be taken for granted and provide greater insight on the full nature of the United States as a country. What do you think of these regions? Let us know your I liked it, and to be fair, I'm glad they did the, the new map of the area yeah. because it gives way more of a picture than the states. Yeah, it does. Enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah, I need to get back to work. Uh, we're running late, so smash that like button, guys. Smash the subscribe button, we really appreciate it. Like I say, we're recording our lunches because we do yeah. really enjoy this. And we want to get you legends videos in between the American videos. So what should we do? Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you legends in the next one. Peace.